Welcome to episode four of Canadian's Coronary. I'm Nick Murdocko. Already at four episodes? Wow. <laughs> and that's Gary Whitaker, who can count. And uh, we are the franchise, and you can hear us live every Saturday and Sunday morning on the Team 990 right here in Montreal from 6 to 9 a.m., where we talk about all that is Montreal themed sports and mixed martial arts. And uh, this is our web show called Canadians Coronary. On today's show, we're going to be talking about Markov. Did he play his last game as a Montreal Canadian? PK Subban, the new heir apparent on the D, or is maybe his mouth going to get him in a little bit of trouble? And you know what? To top things off, amongst other hot topics we're going to dedicate this show to the memory of mr pat burns and gary and i are going to give you our take on the whole hall of fame issue hope you enjoy the show All right, Whitaker, I want to yes. start off this show with uh, the fact that uh, we should pay uh, homage, a Absolutely. tribute to the life and career that was uh, uh, Mr. Pat Burns. Uh, this Coach. gentleman, Coach Pat Burns, has been with four different NHL teams and uh, has had a winning record with all four. We're talking Montreal, Toronto, Boston, and New Jersey. He won, he won the uh, Jack Adams Trophy for Best Coach uh, three times for three different teams, uh, Boston, Toronto, and Montreal. And the one team that he did not win the Jack Adams Trophy with? Nah, he settled for a Stanley Cup. You settled for a Stanley Cup. So, you know, uh, great career uh, uh, during our show on the Team 990. We had many people call in uh, in the media that have spent time with Pat Burns that gave us a lot of insight of what a great person this was. Uh, tough love type of coach, and uh, everyone loved him despite uh, sometimes him screaming and yelling and getting all emotional. Uh, we as Montreal fans appreciated and loved Pat Burns as a coach in Montreal. And I kind of still loved him as a coach on another team. Never wanted to face him. But respect and our, our heartfelt uh, 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 condolences to the family and friends of Pat Burns. So we paid tribute to his life. Now it's about getting upset over the disrespect that we felt uh, was, was put towards him at the end of his life, unfortunately, by the Hockey Hall of Fame. And my question to you, Mr. Murdocko, mm -hmm. is how upset, how mad should fans be seeing that the Hockey Hall of Fame, especially knowing that... The, you know, this was the final uh, few months for Pat Burns. Uh, how upset are you and how upset should fans be over the fact that he was not immediately indoctrinated into Hockey Hall of Fame? I have a few words to describe my feelings here regarding the whole Pat Burns and the overlooking of the uh, Hall of Fame uh, scenario. Despicable, despisable, horrible, shameful, self-righteous, self-serving, selfish, a pity and just overall pitiful. Uh, pitiful, all right? This should never, never have happened. It should have happened in Pat Burns' lifetime that he was in, in, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. They even had a warning call. They even had a wake-up call when approximately 60-some-odd days ago, it was falsely announced that Pat Burns had died. And if that wasn't the wake-up call to make the powers that be, those self-surfing powers that be, decide to maybe bend a little bit the rules to get uh, Pat Burns into the Hall of Fame, well, you know what? You blew your chance. You blew your chance to do something good to make everything right while the man was living. It's not the same thing like getting a guy into the Hall of Fame after his parents passed away. Would have been nice to have your parents see you in the Hockey Hall of Fame, a la Larry Robinson and the Montreal Canadiens when his jersey got hung up. But this was Pat Burns, a proud man who would have loved nothing despite uh, his condition at the end of his life to have his family witness him be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. I'm sick over it and it should have been done. Uh, you know what? Uh, the only thing I can add to that is the fact of the matter is the fans spoke out in waves. When it came out at the time, erroneously, that Pat Burns had died, there was an immediate cry uh, to the Hockey Hall of Fame and to the NHL that something should have been done. The fan reaction was swift and the fan reaction was negative. So they had every reason in the world. They knew what to, to expect. So as far as I'm concerned, the negativity should be five times, ten times worse because they were pre-warned. They knew what, what was going to happen. And you know what? They should get even more negativity thrown their way. As far as I'm concerned, that's grounds for just getting rid of everybody and overhauling the entire system of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Now, 
you're usually glass half full type of guy, so maybe you want to tell the folks your little take on what you hope may be a scenario that uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame may have done, and we're hoping that that's going to come out. That's right. I actually forgot about that because I got so angry. <laughs> the only thing I can maybe hope for is that somehow in some official type of capacity, maybe in a private way, because Pat Burns was someone who still uh, wanted to keep everything close to himself, his family and his friends, uh, especially near the end of his life. The only thing I can hope for is that there was an official meeting with uh, Pat Burns and his family and where there was some discussion maybe some private little ceremony amongst people that were close to him and that the information didn't come out as of yet but that's my only hope huh. and the only saving grace hmm. is that if something like that did happen then fine but I am by no way means saying that it did I'm just saying that that is the only way that this could have been accepted in terms of him not being f f formally indoctrinated into the Hockey Hall of Fame and if you did never mind <laughs> so all right I want to move on uh, yeah. we've got some lots of topics to get to uh, we'll bang them out real quick here yeah. Andre Markov Whitaker uh, everyone knows he busted up ACL torn ACL bone contusions the knee is gone folks uh, and it is going to be at least till the month of of May before he even starts skating again, let alone competing. Yeah. Now, the big question is, has Andre Markov played his last game as a Montreal Canadian? Uh, you know what? Very simply, I hope not. I understand that uh, there are people out there that will look to see, uh, to try to get whatever value they can for him, maybe even if it's a seventh round draft pick. I, I know he's, he's with a free agency status at the end of the season. At the end of the day, uh, I would hope that the Montreal Canadiens, who have always shown loyalty to their veterans up until a certain extent, I hope that they extend the loyalty for a guy like Andre Markov. I think they missed the boat with Saku Koivu. I would have liked to have seen them keep Saku Koivu for everything in the he's done. I would actually like to see them do the same for Andre Markov, assuming that Andre Markov continues his own trend of taking that hometown discount. Nick? The difference between Koivu and Markov is that Koivu no longer fit in what the Canadians thought their plans were. Markov was a huge part of what the Montreal yeah. Canadiens were looking to build going forward. Uh, rumor had it, and it was uh, reported by Tony Marinaro, that about a month ago the Montreal Canadiens were in negotiations with Andre Markov. They offered him five years. And the situation here was that Markov was looking for a little bit more. They didn't disclose the terms uh, as far as per year, but Markov was looking for his final contract and wanted to finish it here in Montreal. Now, it would seem that all bets are off as far as the term is concerned. To your point, I would hope that the Montreal Canadiens would take a look and see an offer of something less term, like two years, one or two years, uh, at a decent amount to not um, embarrass anybody yeah. and uh, see how Markov uh, plays. Uh, one last point on that. It was also announced by Pierre Maguire on the Team 990 that a uh, defenseman such, such as Chris Chelios was able to play without his ACL uh, in the later stages of his career. So it is doable. It's painful. We don't know the uh, effects yet of Andre Markov, but hopefully the Canadians do the right thing here, but they have to think with their head and not their heart, as do Montreal fans. <laughs> we have the technology, and apparently now we also have the cap space. So <laughs> with his, uh, with him being moved to the injured reserve, that frees up some money. With the moves the Canadians have made so far, that frees up some money. So my question to this one, Mr. Murdako, is do the Canadians try to shore up and maybe uh, replace him on the defense, or do they try to look and maybe fit something in for that top six forward that they seem to be missing to maybe gel with a guy like Gomez? Well, uh, good point, uh, Tubby, because <laughs> the Montreal Canadiens, it is known right now, they're full of a bunch of players on the uh, top six that are great passers and great playmakers, but there's no finisher. Now, you've got approximately $6 million, including the amount that was left over when they got rid of uh, Ryan O'Byrne to Colorado, and so now you've got some decent money to perhaps go and get a player. Who that player is, not quite sure. Uh, not sure which teams want to start dealing or making a deal or at this stage in time, but in my opinion, if you're going to look at defense versus offense, I think you've got the D pretty much covered as far as you've got Yannick Weber that just came up and still has yet to make uh, himself known on the Montreal D. He has not had a chance to no, play yet. He'll make I'm himself known when people go blow, blow right by him. But continue. Well, you've got, you've got P.K. Subban that wasn't there last year in the Montreal Canadiens still managed to make uh, a decent run to the Stanley Cup uh, semifinals yes. without Andre Markov. Yes. They've been dealing without Andre Markov. When Andre Markov first joined the Canadiens, don't get me wrong, he is a key important part of the Montreal Canadiens at this point. However, the Canadiens have a grown and adapted without him. Thanks. So if you got to do something, put three or four points more on the board and you would have to worry less, especially with Carey Price playing on fire. Thank you. All right. So you know what? Uh, what about... Uh, 
because <laughs> now we're getting to another point that we may uh, touch off on. After the game against the Hurricanes, which sent Markov to the IR, and after the uh, convincing win against the Philadelphia Flyers just re recently, I'm not convinced that the Montreal Canadiens could uh, survive a seven-game series to the likes of what we saw against the, the Philadelphia Flyers. And I'm starting to wonder when they're going to start taking liberties with some of our smaller players, should there not be somebody on that roster that can go and start pushing around some of their smaller players? The Canadians don't really have one right now. Yeah, well, I've been uh, against the whole crap yep. for enforcer for the longest time. I don't mind a little bit of team toughness, the but crap? Uh, the, the, the whole crap of having an enforcer, right? I mean, the last time we tried to bring someone in, his, the crap his name was uh, Georges Lerac. It didn't quite work out, right? It was a crappy uh, well. decision, crappy play. We both loved Lerac, but we I was were all highly excited. disappointed. And then now, he got the code. Right. Now, now here's my big issue with, with uh, P.K. Subban, uh, in, where, and I think the controversy that bringing on P.K. Subban, and why more than the Canadians, uh, p specifically P.K. Subban, the issue right now of, with the lack of enforcer is that when all these other players start seeing the Habs defense, and it seems to be the Habs, the old defense is the only person that's above six foot tall on the Montreal Canadiens, and, the and they're the only ones that are there to you know create some kind of uh, well, calmness, if you will, on the ice and bring the peace. They're okay if Hal Gill's doing it, but when P.K. Subban, who leads a team in ice, starts skating up to them and saying, no, leave my little guys alone, they kind of look over at him and we'll leave the racial stuff out of it, basically say, who are you, Rook? and to tell me to leave some of these guys alone. And I think that's where a lot of the disrespect comes in. So, you know what? Because you have a gem of a player in P.K. Subban and you want to develop him, you don't want him going the wrong path, like using his hands instead of being brilliant on the ice, try to be brilliant in fighting. No. Uh, I, I would rather bring in an enforcer to come in and take over that role and to uh, so that P.K. Subban could just skate to the bench, line change, and bring in somebody else. I'm sure you're going to be bringing up P.K. Subban a little bit later, but the bottom line is, is you've, you it's a long time since the Montreal Canadiens have had a player the likes of P.K. Subban who wasn't at the goaltender's position. Uh, you've got people like Maxim Lapierre that are starting to fight uh, for their team. All right, we saw it. He's the uh, poor man's uh, Tom Kostopoulos, and that's not saying much. Unfortunately, uh, God bless him for oh, trying. Right, took boxing lessons. Yeah, well, God bless him for trying. And the other fighter was Ryan O'Byrne, and he wasn't doing much on the bench and not going to do anything in Colorado for the Montreal Canadiens. Travis Moen fights every once in a while, but who is going to be scared of anybody on the Montreal Canadiens right now? Nobody. Maybe Alex Henry is the short-term solution up in, down in Hamilton. Maybe he'll come up. Maybe he'll sit on the bench until needed in games such as the ones against Philadelphia. Time will tell, but at this point, you've got to protect your star players, and P.K. Subban is going to be one of them. Absolutely. Now, we talked about it just two seconds ago. People don't like the fact that PK is uh, Superman is doing that, and he was called out by uh, Philadelphia captain Mike Richards. So my question to you then, in response to guys is like Mike Richards, do you think PK is just too cocky, or is he just showing the confidence that comes with the skill set that he has? Like we said in uh, in the show earlier on on uh, on the Team 990, uh, Mike Richards' statement went something to the to the likes of "Wah!" All right, Mike Richards is a veteran. I understand what he's doing. I understand what he's saying, and that PK. Subban should uh, uh, eat some crusts, as they say, before he even uh, has a, has an opportunity to talk to to the veterans like this. You know what? In the old days, the players didn't come on microphones and start saying, you know, he's going to get his, and and he better watch out. They took care of it on the ice. And as PK Subban said, what happens on the ice stays on the ice. If Mike Richards had a problem, go after PK Subban and his whole, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but uh, someone's going to take care of him. Well, why isn't that someone you? Mike, and why did you say that, and how come you were not fined? If I said anything similar to that in my workplace, I'd have been uh, uh, reprimanded at the very least, and I don't think that instigating something like that, the next time P.K. Subban says something to uh, another player on another team, he may remember Mike Richards where he says, yeah, I, I better do something about it, and if they do something about it, it just starts something bad. P.K. Subban backs up his words, backs up his chirping with uh, great play for a young rookie, and uh, more good things will come. He should not be bridled he should not be harnessed. He should continue doing what he's doing. As long as his coach and his teammates appreciate what P.K. Subban is doing and getting these stars off their game, if he's getting under their skin, good for P.K. Subban. Rumble, young man rumble. We hope you enjoyed episode four of Canadian's Coronary. Lots more of this to come. If you like what you hear or don't like what you hear, add comments wherever the comment box is or subscribe to this video if you can. We are at our bar where we usually film the Canadian's Coronary right here at 5817 Boulevard Saint-Laurent. It's not your bar. It's
It's not my bar. It's our bar. All Big right, thanks baby. to DJ Sherman, who is always uh, giving us good work on the camera. Thanks, Bubba. <laughs> Did you say Bubba? He's a mensch. I love him. <laughs>